Hey everyone, Chad here from the Electric Academy. And in this week, we're gonna start our discussions on the electrical code. And specifically this week, we're talking about conductor ampacities. So let's get started. Hey everyone, Chad here from the Electric Academy and welcome to our first in a series that I'm gonna be doing on code. I'm teaching an electrical course right now at BCIT and we're in right deep into code. So I thought I'd build a couple um, code videos as I go along here. It's something I've been meaning to do for a very long time and I just haven't gotten around to it. And so we actually have a snow day here today in Vancouver. We, uh, we got hit with like a, I don't know, I think I had like eight inches of snow I had to shovel off the driveway, which I know for you people back east, you're not going to be uh, feeling too sorry for us. But for us here in the West Coast, man, it's we're not used to that. So just as a little disclaimer, when I go over this today, we're going to be talking about com conductor opacity. And I'm going to be using the Canadian electrical code because I'm from Canada. So all of you Americans are going to be watching this. There is a counterpart in the NEC, and I'm not sure what it is, but it's the basic same idea. So if you want to just watch along to see how we calculate conductor opacity, the code rules be different, but I think the ideas are the same. And I know that our tables are very similar to the NEC table, so similar ideas as we go here. So let's get digging in here. I like to keep these things short and sweet, as you know. So conductor opacity, how do we figure out what current we're allowed to put on what conductors? So first off... There's some factors that affect your opacity and factors that we have to consider. There's the type of material that you're using. And what I mean by that is, are we using a copper conductor or are you going to be planning on using an aluminum conductor? The next thing that we have to consider is the method of installation. Is it going to be enclosed? And what I mean by that is, is it going to be run in some sort of raceway, typically a conduit or maybe even a cable tray, or is it going to be run out in free air? So... In my experience, though, I haven't done a lot of free air, and from what I can see and talking around and talking to people, free air seems to be a little bit rare. Free air, I thought, would be like if it was inside um, MCC and kind of in the panduit there, but that's not free air. That's still within an enclosed space. So, again, that's uh, something else. Maybe if you have an idea, maybe put that down in the comment section below here. That would be great if you can give me an example of what free air looks like or even add a picture or send me a, a link there of something that I can look at. But for the most part, we're going to be dealing with stuff that's enclosed because it's going to be in some sort of cable assembly or a conduit. Next, we have to do is we have to figure out what kind of insulation we're dealing with. We have insulation around the wire for a reason. It protects the actual conductor and it also prevents it from short circuiting. So we don't want the insulation burning off. So we have to take into consideration the temperature rating of the insulation. We also have to worry about the ambient temperature in the room. So typically, according to our code here, and that's what, let me show you here, this Canadian Electrical Code 2018, um, typically anything below 30 degrees C, we can go ahead and use our tables as we will, but then anything over 30 degrees C, we have to derate. And we'll talk about that later on as we get going here. So anything that's 30 degrees or higher, or higher than 30 degrees, is going to be have to be derated. Because again, what happens here is, we know that the conductors themselves, when they have current running through it, it creates heat and heat does stuff to the insulation. So we have to worry about the current running through the conductors as well as the heat around the room. If we have a room that's very hot, well, then we might have to derate the cable based on the opacity and based on the temperature rating of that insulation. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to be going a little bit through the Canadian Electrical Code. If you can tell me, put in the link in the description below, sorry, or the comments below, Give me a comment on the NEC version. Like, where do you guys down in the States find out where you, you get your opacity of your wires and your cable? So, again, this little tutorial I'm going to be going through is going to be based off the four, our 2018 electrical code, which is finally just adopted. I'll be addressing that in later videos. Uh, but so we're going to be using, specifically when we're talking about opacity of wires and cable, we're going to be using rule 4-004. So the opacity for copper wire, if you would turn with me, if you've got your code book open, you would go to 4-004, and I'm just opening it up here just so you know that I'm actually looking at this stuff. That's our rule there, and for copper wire, we have subrule 1, 
I'm not going to read through sub rule one. I'm just going to hit on the major points here. But that's where we're finding all our rules about opacity for copper wires. So it tells us in 4001 that if we're dealing with single conductor and free air, we get our starting opacities from table one, which we'll go to in a second. I've got some examples, so don't worry about that. But if we're dealing with one, two, or three conductors in a raceway or cable assembly, we're going to table two. And this is only for copper. This is not for aluminum. So table two is where we're going to be going. And honestly, I spend probably 95% of my time starting in table two when I'm talking to my students and when I was out in the field because I'm dealing with conductors that are going into a conduit or into some sort of cable assembly like a tech cable, multi-conductor tech, that sort of thing. So that's opacity for copper wires in 4-004 sub rule one. Ampacity for the aluminum wire is same ideas. It's found in 4-004 sub rule 2. Because in that area, we're, there's very similar rules because all we're dealing with is different material. And aluminum is got can handle a little bit different ampacity. So we'll talk about that. So your tables are going to be different. So instead of using tables 1 and 2 for a single conductor in free air, we're going to use table 3. So it's got its own for aluminum. And then we've got table four for one, two, three conductors in a raceway or cable assembly for aluminum. So again, the important part is realizing, are you dealing with aluminum wire or are you dealing with copper wire? Because your tables are totally different. Now, we also have some correction factors because we're going to have to derate at some points. So that takes us to some other tables here. Now, in these rules in 4-004 sub rule one and sub rule two, they refer you to this table here, and I think I've got that this down first. Yes, I do. Table 5C. And it says correction factor for four or more conductors in erasways for table two and four. So tables two would be your copper conductors up to three. And tables four is your aluminum conductors up to three. But if you have more conductors, then you're going to have to derate. Because if you have more conductors carrying current, it's going to create more heat. And that heat's going to create problems for the insulation. So we need to derate it. We need to bring the heat back a little bit. So that's table 5C. 5A, that rule, and I, I mentioned this later on in the presentation, but that uh, table, it's referred to in sub rule 7, 4-004, sub rule 7, item B, item I. And it says the correction factor specified in this rule shall apply only to power and lighting circuit conductors as follow. The opacity correction factors of table 5A, where conductors are installed in an ambient temperature exceeding or anticipated to exceed 30 degrees Celsius. So again, we're up in Canada, we're using metric. So you go ahead, you Americans, and make go to, uh, you would be dealing with Fahrenheit. 5B is correction factors for tables 1 and 3, where single conductors are in free air and in contact with each other. So I don't go over those in the examples because I have rarely used that actually in real life. And again, if you have used that in real life, please go ahead and leave a comment below. I would love to hear it and see where we're using this thing. Because honestly, I, yeah, I teach this stuff, but there's things that I don't know yet too. So that's what I love about having this channel is that I learned just as much from you guys as hopefully that you're learning from me. So here we go. We're going to go over some examples of how this stuff works. Example number one. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate for one number three R90 copper conductor in free air. So the first step here is we're going to go to table one and our tables in the 2018 code book. Let me just open it up here. I find them on on uh, starting to do starting on page 417 for the tables. And that's in the 2018 code book. But they're all around the same area. If you're if you're using the 2015, I think. The tables are very similar. I don't know if there's any impasse changes to the tables. I should know that. I should go over and do a, a video on the code rule changes from the 2015 to 2018, but that's another video for another time. So anyways, we're starting with table one. And it's important here, if we go to table one, you're going to see that you have down the sides here, you've got, and let me hold this up so you can see it. You've got your size, your AWG size, your American wire gauge size. So you've got that going down that side. But then along the top here, we have different temperature ratings. So we have to take that into consideration. In this one, we're using R90. So we're going to use the 90 degree column, which is this column here, and then work our way down. So that's important. So our 90 degree column, we go to number one, and we should end up starting with, if we're using table one, for one number three conductor, I've got 
165 amps. And that's it. I only wanted to know what one was, so there you go. Table one, done. Example number two. Calculate for three, number three, TW copper conductors run in conduit. So we know that this isn't single conductor run in free air. And it's copper, so we're either using table one or two, not single conductor run in free air. So then we're going to table two. So I turn the page to table two. Then we need to go down and we need to figure out what our uh, impacity, or not impacity, sorry, temperature rating of the wire is. TW, just as an FYI, is rated at 60 degrees Celsius. So the columns again, I'm going to be using six. There's the columns across. You've got 60 degrees, 75 degrees, 90 degrees, 110 degrees, 125 degrees, and 200 degrees. We're using the 60 degree column in table two. So we do that, and if we run our fingers down there, number three, we end up with 85 amps in the 60 degree column. So far, so basic, right? Let's keep going. In example three, let's kind of mix it up a little bit. We're gonna calculate the opacity for each of six number 12 R90 copper conductors running conduit. So again, our baseline is always gonna be table two from this point on, because we're using more than, we're assuming that they're in, it says conduit, so we know that we're using table two as opposed to table one. So we start there into table two, and we work out that number 12 R90, so number 12, 90 degrees, we start out with 30 amps. Then what we need to do is we need to go to table 5C, because 4-004 sub rule 1 tells us that if you have more than three conductors, you have to derate according to table 5C. So we kick over to 5C, and we see that We've got six, so running across there, four to six means that we have to derate at 80% or 0.8. So we're taking that 30, actually I got 35 amps, that should say 30, sorry, little mistake there, should say 30 amps times 0.8, I've got the right answer though, is 24 amps, right? So that's what we've got it at. So again, what we do is we go to table two, get our, our base point, which is 30 amps, we go to table 5C, and we find that we need to derate that by 80% or 0.8. So then we went 30, not 35, 30 times 0.8 equals 24 amps. All right, let's go to example number four. Calculate the opacity for each of eight number 10 RW75 copper conductors run in a conduit at an ambient temperature of 50 degrees C. A couple minutes ago, I mentioned this ambient temperature. We are above 30 degrees C. That's going to cause some issues. We're going to have to derate for that. So first thing again, table two. We go to table two, and we figure out that number 10 is good for 35 amps. Okay, so that's our starting point. Then we notice that we've got eight of these wires. So it's more than three, so we have to go to table 5C. From 5C, we find that we have to take it at 70%. We're going to figure out 35 amps times 0.7 equals 24.5 amps. Now here's the kicker. What we need to do now is we need to go to table 5A because it tells us in 4004 sub rule 7 item I to go to table 5A. And what we're going to do is find our, impacid, our ambient temperature is 50 degrees. So we're gonna run our finger down to 50 degrees and then we're gonna go across and now we see that we've got 75, it's RW75. We're going to be using the 75 degree column. So we're going to be multiplying that by 75% or 0.75. So we're taking 24.5 amps and multiplying it by 0.75 to get 18.375 amps. And that's the maximum capacity that we can put on each of these eight because there's eight conductors. So we need to derate for the fact that there's more than three. And then it's going through a very hot room, a 50 degree C room. Celsius, so again, we have to derate again because of the temperature. And we got one final to go here. We're gonna talk about this one, this is a good one. Calculate the opacity for each of four number two R90 aluminum conductors, I'm trying to trick you up on this one, when installed with two number eight TW aluminum in the same conduit. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kick it back for a second over to um, 4-004, and I wanna read you that rule, that talks about the fact where we've got more than, we've got two different temperature ratings. See, we've got, over here we've got R90, but then we have TW, which is rated at 60 degrees. So if you look here, our first step here is gonna to be to go to table four. Why table four? Because of this 
the aluminum, the aluminum conductor. We're not using table two anymore. We have to use table four because I said aluminum. Watch for that. So table four is where we're starting. Then we go to table, or sorry, rule 4-004, sub rule 14. And let me read to you from the good book here. And it says, The impacity of conductors of different temperature ratings installed in the same raceway shall be determined on the basis of the conductor having the lowest temperature rating. We look here, we've got a 90 degree rating. We've got a 60 degree rating. What we're going to do is treat everything that's in the same conduit like it's 60 degrees. Okay, because we're going to go with the weakest link. So even though this insulation here is rated for 90 degrees, we're going to treat it like it's 60 degrees. So what we're going to do is calculate out our four number twos as they are TWs or 60 degree wire. So we do that and I'm going to go to table four and I'm figuring out four number two. So I go to number two and I run my finger across and I get 75 amps because I'm in the 60 degree C column because I'm treating everything in that conduit like it's TW or no, 60 degree cable. Then we go to table 5C because I have four wires plus two wires. I have six current carrying wires in the conduit, so I need to derate for that. So I'm gonna go four to six gives us a duration factor of 80% or 0.8. So there we go, 75 amps times 0.8 gets us 60 amps. And that gets us everything we need for this point. I don't have any other ambient temperature. We can assume that it's gonna be 30 degrees C and away we go. One more thing, when we're dealing with conductors in the conduit, uh, when we're dealing with bonding conductors or a true neutral, the neutral that is actually meant to not carry current or is there to you know provide a reference point as well as carry the unbalanced current, so not much current, because they're not meant to be current carrying conductors, you don't count them. So if this had say four number two R90s and two number eight TWs and a bonding conductor, you would still consider it to be six wires. You don't count that bonding conductor or the neutral that's in there. Okay, that's all I got for now. Do me a favor, if you're getting anything out of these videos, please leave a, a comment down below. I'm trying to get way better at responding to them. And if you could just hit that subscribe button, that uh, lets you know when the next time I've got a video coming out. I'm trying to release at least a video a week in the 2020 year. And I'm trying to double down on my code because I really want to get some code videos out there. Um, make sure you hit that bell notification as well. If you have any questions at all, I'm leaving some links to some stuff down in the description below so you can get some more information about what's going on with the Electric Academy. And I just want to say thanks for everybody who supported me along the way here. And we're just going to keep on keeping on. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you later. <laughs>